Hey, today, today I've got to repair one of these. Actually, I've got to do two of these. I've got two of them to do. So this is a Sturmiarcher front dyno hub. You can get them in rear as well with the three speed. Um, this one in particular is from 1957. There's a little date stamp on the back. Um, that's when it was made. The other one I've got is from 1971. And they look pretty much unchanged over those years. These two that I've got are both pretty much seized solid. So um, I don't know how much hope I have for these to be fixed, but I'd like to see if I could fix them. Um, see if they can generate any power because I do have a couple of dynamo lights I'd like to use. I mean, I'd like to use this on the pathway, so if I could just to power a front light but uh, yeah we'll see we'll see how it works I haven't stripped any of these down before so uh, we're going to be doing it step by step and um, I guess the credit for this the instructions are going to go to Mr RJ the bike guy because uh, I've seen quickly how he did his which I think was a similar year so uh, we're going to go through it today um, if you're not subscribed to RJ, I don't know why you wouldn't be if you're watching this channel. But if you're not subscribed to RJ, go over and um, go over and hit him up. So one side's already been lost the axle nuts, so they're going to go. Oh, just turn. So from what I've seen, we've got obviously to take the axle nuts off. On this side, which is. Uh, Let's call it the drive side um, because it's got the drive unit on. Okay. This side should be a fixed side, so all the adjustment is going to happen on the other side. But this dyno section here, this section has to sort of move independently. So if I spin it around like that, that's very gritty. Um, and this stood, should stay still wherever you go um, but these washers here should be holding that down so this is a bit loose to start with because this staining place and this spinning round with the wheel is what generates the electricity so we're going to have to take these off you're going to need like a cone wrench and uh, adjustable or if you've got the right size use the right size but we're going to take this off pack years of dirt on it so one's off going to take this two set of two washers off and then that frees up here we've got the uh, cone nut which should be fixed that should be fixed and held down and um, this also then frees up us to be able to lift this whole unit here out and to do that we've got to remove these four doohickeys, nuts and they'll each have a little lock nut, a lock washer underneath if you're wondering where, got, where I got the date from as well it's right there, 1957 8th October, 8th October, 8th August 1957, which is uh, just about the right year for my pathway to actually be. So there are 5 mil. Chuck your socket on the floor. Be careful not to lose these, which I probably will. Oh, almost did. One. And as you remove these actually, some of them will drop out, so just be wary of that. <laughs> because they're little like, um, well they're going to be, oh, oh no. Did you see that as I was talking? One of the lock washers pinged off somewhere. 
and if I carefully lift this up I'll be able to grab the pins as they fall out as one two and another pin out and now that should free up this whole unit to come off but what I believe I forgot to do so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take off this side so it's like a 16 mil Wow, so you can see how dirty that was. That is. And how skinny a, skinny a wrench you need. I do have a 16mm, just here, but it's just too thick. I mean, so right here. A sturmy archer of like really skinny flats on the cones. And there. And then we could just tap the axle through actually. and the whole unit comes out and that will be why it was um, chunky but don't start pulling this apart because it will screw up the dynamo making but inside inside you can see the reason why it was uh, gritty and pretty much seized because the uh, the race has just collapsed, which is actually the same problem that um, RJ had on his. So there goes the race. Oh, and then it pops out. Okay, so we're going to clean everything up now. This is gonna. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna clean all the uh, bushings up. I'm gonna pop this back down and lock it off. And inside here, we've got a lot of cleaning to do. Um, you've got the just a casing where the magnet will sit in. You've got a little spacer ring in the bottom, and you've got the bearing area where the bearings will sit. Uh, on the other side, you've got some more bearings with just a little cap that you can pop out to release them. And Sturmy Archer bearings are specific. Oh, well that just disintegrated as well. There we go. And we're back. All cleaned up now, used uh, thinners, white spirits on all the parts um, and then gone over all the metal parts with some metal polish, some auto, auto salt metal polish inside and out with a bit of a fine, very fine grade wire wool. Um, it's polished up beautifully on the outside. Unfortunately where, unfortunately where the bearing race is collapsed and it hasn't been maintained there is some scoring on the inside I hope you can see that but there's a little bit of scoring just around the inside edge here from where the bearings have collapsed and run a bit more there and on the inside, on this side especially which it completely collapsed there is just a little bit on the inside and there's not much I can do about that at all um, unfortunately it is what it is with that this hub might run a little rough, uh, we will see, the, the cones are also a little worn but I'm going to put some fresh bearings in there, fresh grease, get it all back together and see how it works. 
So, first things first, we'll do this side, we'll do the non-drive side. And now when it comes to the bearings, Sturmi Archer have a different size, so they use, I believe that's a quarter inch, um, but they are a different size to, say, your button bracket ones, which are like this. That's your button bracket style. That is just about the right size to drop in, but it won't seat correctly in the hole. So the Sturmi Archer was slightly different, just a slightly smaller diameter and they're going to drop right in there, but I'm going to have to grease those up first, obviously. So I'm going to put a bunch of grease around that. Just put a bit of grease around the base as well, just to, just to line it. There you go. And then we're going to need the uh, cap on. Just use a soft hammer mallet. Pop that back in. Same for the other side. Okay, so then I think what we're going to do now is to drop the magnet back in. But of course the axle's got to go through it first. Because it's got this little uh, lip which is going to sit in there. Axle will go through, sits in there. Magnet goes over the top. And we've got to roughly align up the holes so that when we drop them through, drop the pins back through, they line up. There we go. We've got to get them in the right spot. There we go. Got it through. So I've got one through. I'm just going to put the lock washer and the nut on. So I'm just going to do that for the other three and uh, hopefully move on to the next part. Okay, so we're going to pinch those up. Just make sure they're nipped up. Unfortunately, there's nothing much I can do about cleaning out the magnet because I can't take it apart, otherwise it might change the polarity. So the magnet is still really gritty. Uh, but now on this side, we can put all the adjustable stuff back on. So we're going to want it spinning smoothly without any play. There's no play in that, which is good. I think that's alright there actually. There's no play and we're not going to get it to spin completely smooth because of the uh, poor the pitting. Okay, cool. We've got it spinning. And there's no play. Which is cool. So this side, just to finish it off, you've got your washer which sits over this adjustable part. And that will clamp down this middle section. Washer on top of that and a lock nut. There we go. Okay, perfect. So that spins, it holds down the centre section. The magnet is really gritty. Um, but that should work now. The magnet wasn't as gritty, it would be perfect. Okay, so we can. I'm going to do the other one as well now. Um, there is one thing that is missing off this one, apart from the axle nuts, and that's the oiler port, which is there. 
Um, let's see if I have a cap that will go over it. Okay, we can put this cap over it for now. There we go. So that's the one done. Now I'm going to do the other one and then we will test out the polarities to see if it, well, not the polarities, test out the voltage, see if it's actually generating anything. So be with you in however long it takes me to do this one. While I think about it, there's one more thing before we move on that RJ mentioned in his, and that's the position of these terminals. Um, obviously, Stony Archer has a flat sided axle, and because this is fixed, this centre section, you want to gain access to the terminals. Now, that position right there is half decent. You can sort of gain access to that one and that one. It would be better if the terminal was here. If you take it out, rotate it 180 degrees and pop it back in. And that's actually not too bad either. That's going to go up there. That's going to spin round and generate the uh, power. If you do want to adjust the position of this, say if they were like completely behind and you wanted to move it, you just got to loosen off that nut and just spin that round and you'll be able to get it into a more suitable position. Okay, both are done now. Um, I've just had to migrate inside just to avoid any, um, shall we say, copyrighted music. But yeah, both done. Both were just as bad inside. Um, the bearings hadn't collapsed in the newer one, but they were rusted and um, yeah, the races in both pitted, they've got new bearings in both, new grease, they both spin freely and the dynamos are all locked off. Um, however, however, I can't test the dynamo out um, at the moment. Because my multimeter has decided to sort of melt itself, uh, so yeah, that's um, that's one thing I can't check on this now. But they both work like they should do. Um, it's nice and easy to adjust this ring if you need to. I mean, it's just loosening that nut off. Um, but yeah, I hopefully should be able to use them now. It's actually quite a simple, simple thing to service. Like you think it's going to be quite complicated with all the magnets, but as long as you don't remove them, it should all go back together pretty smoothly. And uh, for, what was that, 50, 57? So for a hub of that age, that was a spot, that, well, that was really clean compared to the 70s one inside. Better engineering back then. But yeah, um, just a little video, um, how to service these Stony Archer Dino Hubs. Hope it was useful. If you enjoyed the content then uh, subscribe for more. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't. Uh, check some of the other videos out. There'll be a couple linked at the end and I'll uh, catch you in the next one.